and welcome to the Anxiety Hacks podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about everything to do with mental health and well-being. My name's Liv and Gabby isn't with us today, but that's all right. She's going to join us for next week's episode, which is very exciting. So in today's episode, I'm talking to the professional cruise vacation expert. Her name is Emma. Emma makes YouTube videos for a living and shares her love of cruises with an audience of over 120,000 people, which is just amazing. So today, me and Emma just have a chat about her life as a cruise expert and the things that come with being a YouTuber with such a large audience horrible criticism with terrible comments and how that affects her and what she does also to wind down. We also touch on things that she's doing at the moment, which includes a huge charity fundraiser that she's doing where she's going to shave her hair off for cancer in a month, which is a super selfless thing to do and so awesome to be able to use her uh, YouTube channel for good like that. Love that. If you want to donate, you can find her YouTube channel, which is Emma Cruises. And there's a donation site linked to her YouTube channel with the live stream coming up for her shaving hair for cancer. Feel free to donate. Let's crack into the episode. Hey, Emma, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Happy to be here. (laughs) Cool. How how are things? How are you going? Things are good. Things are very, very busy. Um, yeah. Because I'm in the cruise industry and cruising is restarting now. So everything's kind of just happening at once, which is what we wanted. Uh, but it's it's nonstop at the minute, which is, is a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy how much that just kind of has boomed since uh, COVID. And yes. All. And like, how do you find going on the cruises at the moment um, that you do go on? Like, do you feel nervous being on them with COVID or I suppose things are a bit different around the world where you are? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it, it's just the same as normal now. I mean, I just nice. got off a cruise last week. There's, uh, you do a test before you get on, but there's no face mask. There's no social distancing. There's nothing. It's just, it's not really a thing, um, which, which, yeah, it is quite nice. It's been quite a long time. <laughs> yeah yeah no it has been a while my auntie um she works on super yachts so she's been kind of oh. she's on her holiday at the moment she's back in the nice. UK so mm-hmm. just, um doing those pommy things <laughs> nice nice sounds good yeah um but anyway you're doing something uh that really touches me at the moment uh and is really awesome you're about to shave your hair um for cancer I am yeah, yeah so I'm oh, sorry, you I'm go. Doing, doing it live this time, live on YouTube. I did it four years ago. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, at the time I had just less than 2,000 subscribers on my channel. So there's a few people who do remember, but when I hit yeah. 100,000, I thought, you know, last time I thought we raised quite a lot of money with, with only 1,000 subscribers or so. And I thought, if we've got 100 times more, surely we can do something quite big this time yeah um and I've only announced it kind of a week ago it's happening in a month and we're at 16,000 US dollars already which is insane for for hair (laughs) I know I know for hair so you're going to do something with the hair you're going to give it to some kind of uh wig making charity that's so cool yeah so they'll make it into wigs for kids who need hair for you know various reasons that's awesome. It's such a selfless thing to do. I've got someone um, very close to me going in for a, uh, a breast cancer surgery tomorrow. So yeah. really I'm touched, touched by this. It's awesome. So, um, you know, you've been making videos for a while now and uh, something that I suppose pops up a lot and what people don't think about is uh, nasty comments and things that, that do uh-huh. pop up on your videos. Um, yeah. So do you mind talking a little bit about that no. with me today? Of course not. So it's kind of a thing I've got used to over the years. I do find it strange because there's no other job where you would be expected to tolerate the amount of kind of hate and the horrible things that you get on the internet. Um, But I've kind of built up over the years. I'm used to the same insults over and over again. If you're, Mm. especially if you're a woman on the internet, you're fat, you're too skinny, you're ugly, I'm posh, I'm all of these things. And I'm used to those and they don't bother me anymore. Occasionally I'll get an in, it's not an insult. They're using all nice words, but it's really insulting. And they're the ones that kind of get me now. They say, you know, oh, you shouldn't wear that color. You should make sure your hair doesn't do this. You touch your nose too much. Um, Like really odd things like that, which is strange. But I try to just think about it. If somebody's idea of a good time is to sit and comment to tell me that I don't look good in the color red, um, you've got to kind of pity them. So that's what I try to do. It it, it is a lot. You know, I obviously check my YouTube comments as soon as I wake up. 
before I go to bed. It does get into your brain. Um, but I think you, you need to realize when you kind of get a bigger audience on YouTube, they're not all going to like you. There's, there's yeah. no point trying. There's no point arguing with them. Just, just I try and just leave them, ignore them. Um, they can go back to their lives if that's fun for them. <laughs> yeah, I know. But gosh, it's such a... Um you know, it must be so energy draining. I mean, I suppose you've gotten to a point where sometimes you just don't read them or you scroll past yeah. them. Um, Cause it's something that I, you know, watching YouTubers growing up and things and you go look at the comment section. I'm not one to go yeah. write a nasty comment, but looking at other people's, it's like, Oh my God, how did you come up with that? And two, yeah. like, what do you do but- with your life, man? Like, <laughs> and you sort of realize, you know, the things I get insults for, Like I said in my latest video that I'm from the UK, which is Mm. a very factual statement. And people still complained about the fact I said I was from the UK. And they said, how could I say I'm from the UK? We're not united as we used to be. And they go off on these rants about things. So there's nothing you can say. You're never going to please everybody. And I think my my top video just hit a million views. And if I took something, it's insane. But if I took something and I showed a million people it, they're not all going to like it, are they? You know, even if I show 30 people something, then they're not going to like it. And I'm not going to like them. That's the thing. Yeah. If I could see all the million people that have watched it, if they don't like me, I probably don't like them too. <laughs> That's a really good attitude to have about it. Like, sure. I mean, not many people are watching my videos at the moment, but uh, I It'll always... <laughs> yeah, okay. Hopefully, yeah. It will get there. Well, positive attitude here. But they are... Uh... A... Oh, sorry, you go. It's just kind of, it's, it's a rite of passage. You are, When you get the kind of mean comments, you know that you've reached a new audience. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, when I initially publish a video, it's people who want to do a river cruise or want to do a cruise. And then we get outside of that when you get more mm. views and then you get all the weird the weird kind of comments coming in. But yeah, um, that's the price you pay, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so like in terms of... Um, mental health because I mean cruising it's a it's like you go on a holiday or you're going on a vacation I know for you it's yeah. probably a little bit more of work because you're filming you're trying to review things and take videos of things yeah. um, how do you find it on a self-care kind of level is this the dream job I mean I so I left my day job last year I, I maybe would have done it earlier but obviously 2020 was not the time to leave a stable <laughs> job for yeah. a cruise career so I, I sat high I did as much work as I could so that when the industry reopened I could leave my day job and thankfully that that worked out timing wise the thing that I think I struggle with is having a normal job I've always done a nine to five office job and you do your work and you go home and there's defined hours and you have time off whereas for me yeah. all of my time off I'm working more than my time at home if that makes sense mm. because I I can't eat a meal without taking a picture of the menu or the laundry list or mm. thinking about questions I've got to ask and it's amazing it's amazing but for me the thing I struggle with is saying you know what Emma take take t- take your evenings off take time off um, yeah because I'm in charge of myself and I'm not very good at that but no. I'm getting better at it I'm trying yeah good for you no that makes so much <laughs> sense you know in terms of I d- didn't even think about that you know going to sit down at a meal and having to take a photo of the menu that's every time oh, yeah of course yeah yeah and then I, also it's kind of like everything I do is judged now you know Mm. so if I eat something it's I get the comments that say oh you shouldn't eat that you'll ruin your figure or (laughs) you don't eat enough or why did you choose this or why didn't you choose that or we need to see more meat on your page because I'm vegetarian or why aren't you vegan and it's like there's nothing I could share nothing I could wear either that won't get comments about that makes you look this and that makes you look that but you've Mm. got to be careful not to I can't, I'm not going to change. Yeah. I'm not going to change what I eat or what I wear because someone else. Someone's seen it. Yeah. I I can't do that. Uh, But it's something I'm, I'm very aware of now. You know, people will, if I put a picture up, they'll be looking in the mirrors, seeing things in the background saying, why do you have this type of, you know, know. this dehumidifier. Yeah. (laughs) It's really weird. People like to screenshot and zoom in as to what thing that's going on in the background. It's so horrible. eh? It it is, but I'm very used to it now. Shouldn't, shouldn't Mm. have to be, but I'm, I'm very aware of every, everything will be, uh, someone won't like everything I do. So yeah. just do what I want. 
<laughs> no, so you were saying before about how you'd gone from this, um, you know, a nine to five sort of job into doing something, mm-hmm. you know, completely different. Yeah. Um, and that that is a weird transition, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. like you say, there's set hours and then you're going to something that's like all the time. So how yeah. how do you get wind down time and what do you do to kind of shut off from social media and YouTube? It is tricky. I have had to go to the levels of putting the thing on your phone where it blocks the apps from you because I don't have oh. self-control, but past yeah. me does. So in the evening, my apps will kind of close down so I can't reply to things. I think what I struggle with personally is feeling that I, I can never do enough because I can't ever, re- I can't reply to everybody. I cannot yeah. email everybody back as much as I like to. Um, so for me, just saying, you know, I don't I don't have to I really don't if I was to you know send a direct message to someone saying their dinner looks nice I don't expect to reply but when it's me I think I've got to say thank you and um so I really I have had to stop myself from doing that and it's been fine nothing terrible Mm. has happened when I stop replying you know it's been okay it's just kind of giving myself the permission to do that Mm. and with with kind of YouTube and things um I've always kept myself on such a schedule and recently I've kind of, you know, I've taken a week off when I've been away from posting a video. Nothing bad has happened. Yes. Nothing bad has happened. (laughs) I I love your attitude about this because it is that whole thing of saying to yourself, you're um, nothing bad is going to happen if you don't reply to someone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and I I think think a lot of YouTubers must feel that way. Like in the sense of not ever feeling like they've done enough. Right. So you can't be the only one, I suppose. (laughs) No, I think it's, I mean, it's the way that, you know, if I want to learn how to do something on Instagram or I sell an online course or I do consultations or I'm, you know, I'm on Cameo and TikTok and all of these different things. And you see people teach you how to do that thing. And you Mm. think, oh, I've got to put everything into my email marketing and my website. But the person telling you that, that's the only thing they do. And you're trying to do everything as well as you can. And you just, you just can't, you need to kind of prioritize your time. For me, the things that run my business are making videos about cruise ships, writing about cruise ships. Mm. And that's, that's mainly it. I fill a lot of my time with other stuff, but as long as Mm. I do those things, um, we should be able to carry on with this that's the way I see it yeah yeah fantastic that's cool (laughs) and you said something else quite interesting before about the yeah it was about your um your apps and how you're saying Mm -hmm. I don't have self-control but past Emma does this is a this is a funky little thing that I've been bringing up quite a bit in terms of Mm -hmm. looking after your future self so do you have other things that past Emma does for future Emma um I am trying to kind of take weekends off now, which is odd for me because I spent the last, you know, I started my website in 2016 and I spent all of my evenings and my weekends after work doing this. And that Mm. was fine because I had, I I worked in data development. I did coding for a day job. So it was the exact opposite of doing, you know, video or writing. Mm. So even though I was doing, I was doing two full-time job pretty much for years, but they were very, very different. Whereas Mm. now I... I don't need to do that anymore. And I know I don't need to do, I don't need to do two full-time jobs. Um, But sometimes it's hard to kind of tell myself that. So I am, I am getting much better at taking weekends off now and the freedom that it gives me to kind of like tomorrow, I'm going to the pub with my friends for lunch. And I can do that because I'm my own boss now. And I know that I'll work in the evening instead, or I'll I'll make it up. I'll still do the work. Um, but the work will still be there later. So mm. it, 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 it never kind of ends. I always want to clear the decks, but they're never going to be clear because as soon as you reply to emails, more emails come in. Um, mm-hmm. So kind of setting stuff in my calendar, like tomorrow I'm going out with my friends. On Saturday, I've got plans and I can't, I can't work. You know, I still check my emails and stuff, but yeah. everything can go in the reply later folder if it doesn't need a reply now. Um, and then I'll sit down and do that in work time, work time. Yeah. I like yeah. that. It's really nice that you can do that for yourself. And I, I mean, uh, like going from that transition, like of, from going from your day job, what did you say? Like analytics and, and, and. Yeah. So and I, I worked for a, a bigger, big group of car insurers. Oh, wow. <laughs> fun. Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
every time they bought a new company, we would make their data kind of match so we could send mm. reports out to finance and accounting and everything like that. So it was very, I, I studied maths at university, very kind of logical and black yeah. and white. So it was nice for me to come home and write like a food review or, or something completely different. Yeah, I love that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, gosh, maths at university, that would, that would just scare the living daylights out of me. But yeah, it's so funny how careers are changing so much more for like your, your, your generation or my generation where people don't mm-hmm. tend to stick to one thing. It's like uh, people go from yeah. this to that to the next thing. And it's, it's so nice. But how did you find that transition of going from working two full-time jobs uh, yeah. to then going full-time with YouTube? Because I know, you know, financially that can be a little bit scary at times and mm-hmm. stuff like yes. that. So how did it was you find very that? scary. It was very, very scary, but I kind of, I started working from home in 2020 and I Mm. thought, you know, I've got this extra time because I'm, you know, I'm not commuting or anything. So I'm going to, I started doing kind of like live streams at 5 p.m. As soon as I finished work at 5 p.m., I was going live on YouTube and I was switching into the cruise brain and and really just doing the minimum of my day job, to be honest, because at that point, if they, you know, they, they fired me, then. I don't really care. Um, yeah. But I spent my time kind of trying to save up enough money so that if, you know, everything went, I didn't know what was going to happen with the cruise industry reopen. Um, would I be able to make kind of more money when I had all my time into it? I had no idea. So I kind of tried to save up a, a little bit of a safety net. So I felt mm. OK. But I yeah. don't think I don't think you're ever going to feel OK with you know, cutting off a secure income that I'd had for six years. Um, Mm. So at some point, you know, most of my friends left, they kind of relocated my office. And I thought it was January 1st, I resigned in, you know, how people always do January 1st. But I was like, yeah, there's, there's, there's never going to be a perfect time to do this. So I, I, yeah. I jumped, I made a, an educated guess. I had a three month notice period to work. So I was guessing that the cruise industry would reopen in three months ish. Yeah. And it did four, four months after I, you know, resigned. So within a Fantastic. month I was back and I, I, I now can go on trips. Like I wouldn't, I would have run out of holiday. So yeah. um, it, it meant I could do these things when they came up, which was so good. Cause before I had to turn down, you know, I've turned down free Caribbean cruises because I just couldn't get the time off work. Um, oh my no God. one wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I couldn't, couldn't imagine that. And like, mm. I've never been on a cruise before. And I lo- like, yeah. I love getting this insight with your videos. And I mean, no, we talked before about how you're having to film a lot of the time. So it's not mm-hmm. like being on a cruise is always a holiday for you. But um, getting to do these cruises do you feel refreshed when you do them? Are you stoked when you're on them? Like what, what yeah, is this kind of I'm, feeling for you? So it, it kind of depends. There's kind of two types of cruises I do now. So there's ones where it's, I wouldn't have booked it if it wasn't for the channel. It's just mm. people want to know what I think about a Disney cruise. I'm curious. I'll book it. I'll try it. I'll do a short one. And for cruises mm. like that, I'm pretty much, you know, working all my spare time that I can yeah but then also I still do trips with my family and we'll do like um over Christmas we took a 12 12 day cruise so for the first nice. week I'd say I was working and then I think I've told everyone everything they need to know they can wait till I get back enjoy your Christmas um <laughs> and I can kind of take time off like that so it's, it's a bit totally. of both for me at the minute yeah that's lovely so how do you look after yourself your your mental health I mean going from um other than you know, shutting off your apps between certain times mm-hmm. and things like that. Have yep. you got like um, little other habits that you do or things that you can uh, tell yourself to do to get yourself out of certain modes or? Yeah. So I, I think I'm like a stereotypical grandma, like the way a grandma <laughs> lives, that they will get okay. a cup of tea, have a bath, I watch a lot of Coronation Street and I've Love started it. doing, um, the big painting by numbers, the ones that take months. And I absolutely love them. I'll put on like a a really obscure history documentary or something and do a painting. And I just love it. (laughs) It's so silly, but it just stops. It just, it just, I just don't think about anything when I'm doing it. Um, And it's really nice. I really enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. Oh my God. I love hearing that because um, yeah, I've been doing watercolor painting like for the last 10 days as part of my challenge for, um, for work at the moment. And Mm -hmm. I do have the sense of feeling like a grandma. I mean, all my hobbies are like sewing or doing Sudokus and stuff, listening to podcasts, like yeah you're sitting with my cat I mean I have an electric blanket right here oh my god (laughs) amazing love it oh sorry I like it a cozy you know Mm, cozy easy life 
<laughs> that's very nice. And so, um, what what's kind of next for you? I mean, I know you're going to be doing this um this the charity, you know, shaving mm-hmm. off your hair for cancer. Yep. And um, I suppose have you got more that you're wanting to fundraise for? I suppose it's like you know, just make as much as you can, eh, for the yeah. cause. So mm. I mean, I when I kind of announced this I said $50,000 as not Mm. as a it wasn't a joke but it was Mm. kind of like a you know if we get half if if we get you know 10% it's still it's still good isn't it so Mm. we're at $16,000 US dollars right now and we haven't done it yet you know it's in a month's time and I'm doing it live on YouTube this time I do live streams every week so I'm not I'm not really nervous about that and I'm not really nervous about the head shave part, but it's kind of all of the logistics of getting everything organized. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, that I'm nervous about for that. Yeah. Amazing. And um, oh, what was I going to say with that? Oh, where can other people donate? How do we find um, your donation station? So I uh, have a link to a YouTube video. I'm doing it through yeah. YouTube. So there's a donate button on that on that live stream. Um, right, and you perfect. can see the total there. And when we do the actual live stream, I think it will come up like the same way that Super Chats do. So we'll be able to see everybody donating in real time, uh, which will be good. I'll be trying to manage, you know, the comments and the, mm-hmm. the questions and the money and the, the cutting my hair off at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a really stressful day by the sound. I mean, a good I'm, day, but stressful. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it I was planning on doing it on a cruise but the plans kind of fell through so I'm literally shaving my head then going to the airport probably Mm. gonna have a shower in between because I'm gonna have like all the fluffy hair um (laughs) but then I'm doing a a 90s themed cruise with my friends so I'm really looking forward to that I've got all my costumes ready got some wigs to wear and it's going to be so easy because I won't have any you know of my own hair anymore um Mm. so that will be really good I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of I'm going to do that cruise just as a cruise with my friends. I'll film things a little bit, but it's kind of like a, yay, we've done it. Party Um, time. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. All the drinks are included. It's from Spain. It's three nights and nineties themed everything. So that should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's great. And yeah, rewarding yourself for such a big thing. I think that's great Mm -hmm. to do with your friends as well. And three days of a a nineties themed cruise. So nineties themed. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> what, what tell me more about this I didn't even know other than like Disney cruises I didn't know there were mm-hmm. themed cruises yeah so there's um a couple of like 90s bands playing so they'll have like concerts by the pool all yeah. of the kind of there'll be like 90s quizzes 90s game shows 90s like lookalikes and it's all different uh like dressing up every single day different themes um so that would be really fun just 90s have everything <laughs> yeah Oh, I love that. That's so cool. Um, so oh, what what else are you doing for the rest of this year? I know things aren't uh you can't <laughs> always have a schedule just planned out and mapped out all the time, but uh do you do you get anxious about the future in terms of what you're gonna do when you need to post a video? Mm, not so much anymore because I do mm. feel like I can take a bit of a break and it's okay. If you'd asked yeah. me six months ago, I would have been a bit more stressed about kind of yeah. planning things, but I, I have cruises and kind of plans of things I want to do. Most months I will take some sort of trip and I'll make some sort of big video about it. And then I do weekly live streams and all kind of the, the social accounts and everything. So mm. I, I feel, you know, Even if I do something that's not amazing now, I've got kind of a core audience who will watch my videos, which is so, it it takes so much of the pressure off. Um, So I I feel like I've kind of got into the swing of it now. We're just coming up to a year of doing all of this stuff full time. Mm. And just the, the, the rise of the cruise industry, taking me out of the equation, the rise of everybody booking cruises means that all of my older videos are getting views. The ones that were irrelevant are coming back to life because yeah. I have this back catalog of 400 videos. And when the pandemic hit, I lost, I mean, on my website, I lost 95% of the traffic overnight and it took two years to get back to where it was. And mm. all of my YouTube videos, which were, you know, cabin tours, ship tours, what to pack, how to buy your travel insurance. They were all irrelevant instantly. Mm. So it all stopped and no advertisers wanted to advertise on a cruise channel. The amount of money I got for a view went down about a fifth and my views oh my obviously God. dropped off. Um, yeah. So so that wasn't good. But now we're seeing the opposite end of that. And those things are still there that I made, you know, five years ago. It's kind of awkward for me to watch those. I don't like it. Yeah, you know, when I, I people get comment that. on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so but they, but they are still there, you know, and, and 
I still agree with myself. I just often think, oh, <laughs> why does it yeah. look like that? But it is what it is. It's so hard. You you can never, like again, you can never feel 100% happy with the, uh, the videos you made like five years ago, eh? Because you just, no. you progress so much. And that's, um, that's, that's good, nice though. to have that progress put like on YouTube so you can look back at it, eh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I tried all kinds of things, which I think is what you need to do on YouTube. So yeah. a lot of people in the crew space do a lot of kind of uh, daily vlogging, like eat with me, what is this and that. And I tried that for a while. I tried kind of more um, just sitting down information. I thought people wanted like this, this, this. Mm. Tried that for a while. And I've kind of settled in a place where I am more like going on a cruise and telling the story of it as if I was sitting down, you know, with you and you've never been on this cruise. Why did I book it? What did I think it would be like? How was it? What surprised me about it? Um, mm. And that works really well for me. I don't I don't like being someone who's, you know, walking around talking to a camera. I don't want people to look at me. Oh, I just I want like to that. be. Yeah, I just want to be a normal person who's, you know, mm. just taking a picture of my food um so I'm kind of happy with where I've I've settled but it has it has mm. taken five years maybe mm. of, of trial and error to get there yeah nice no but it's it's cool though because well clearly that's what the audience wants and I think just what you said before about you know taking the audience with you and making them feel like they're on board and actually giving them a proper review of how things are done like for someone who's never been on a cruise before that's just so interesting and yeah, like I just I'm really surprised oh sorry you go <laughs> that I just try and create what I would want to watch you know what I, yeah, I mean yeah, so yeah. if I sit down with a friend who's been on a trip I want to know you know did anything funny happen or yeah. anything particularly shocking like um, on my last river cruise that I took that I just got off of last week sometimes the ships dock next to each other so you'll open your windows and there's another cabin there just because of the space in popular places and I came back one evening and there was a, a lady who was completely naked outside of my room <laughs> like two or three meters away from me um oh my God. so that's you know I, I would tell my friends that so I would tell YouTube that because yeah it is it is it is everyone is my friend you know if they're yeah. not my friend and they're mean to me I hide them and I block them and I keep <laughs> I keep the nice yeah. people there so that's how I view it that's so cool I love that naked <laughs> people you know love that <laughs> She didn't see me, thankfully. I think yeah. that would have been more awkward. But my brother was there. He was like, close the curtains, close the curtains. I was like, is that, is she? Oh, is yep. She? <laughs> yeah. I've got to be able to close that curtain fast. <laughs> I don't know what she thought. It was literally like a couple of meters between us with just two glass balcony doors. I, I, yeah. I don't know. But um, oh, well. He was quite happy. So yeah. that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, very nice. And it's so cool that you've, um, you know, you've managed to pick up such an audience like over um, the period of, of, of COVID, well, not over COVID, but, you know, coming out of it and getting up to now 120,000 uh, subscribers, so, was yeah. it? Yeah, that's crazy. crazy. You're, you're growing so fast. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange because you would think that the cruise industry shutting down would have mm. ruined everything for me, but it, it, mm. I don't know if I would be where I was if it hadn't because... Yeah. I kind of just pivoted in. I didn't want to stop. I knew I couldn't make ship tours because all the ships weren't sailing. Um, so yeah. I kind of moved to more, you know, evergreen content, cruise news. And those people who stuck with me throughout 2020, 2021, as we were trying to get back cruising, um, they're my most kind of closest friends now. We've been through it all together. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Love that. And like just making something you know, out of a time that was so hard and horrible for a lot of people to have mm -hmm. some positive come out of that is really nice to hear, you know, so yeah. thank you for, um, thank you for chatting with me today. I won't, I won't um, make you talk for too much longer. So yeah, You're thank you welcome. for chatting. It was really nice and interesting to hear, you know, your points of views and, and things that you, you do with this cruise industry. So yeah, thank you. For thank sharing. you very much. This has been fun. I got to get back to kind of trying to sort out this uh, live stream. Now I, I I'm not a massively technical person and it's getting more and more complicated everything I think I have these great ideas and then I realize I've got to actually do them myself so that's totally. what I'm working on now yeah no fantastic good for you I'll get back to that and we'll uh we'll be Thank watching you. the live screen stream Sounds screen good <laughs> cool all right bye see you later Emma
Thank you for listening to today's podcast. It was such a pleasure to be able to talk with Emma today. So if you want to find out more about her or have a look into what she does for a living, you can find her on YouTube at Emma Cruises, or you can also find her blog site at emmacruises.com. If you want to donate to Emma's uh, Shaving Your Head for Charity event fundraiser, uh, you can find it on her YouTube channel. There's a donation button with her live stream that's coming up. If you want the video version of today's podcast, it is up on YouTube. Or if you want just the audio, the podcast is available on all major podcast streaming platforms. We upload a new podcast every Friday, so stay tuned for next week's episode. Until next time, see you later, stay safe and have a lovely week. Bye.